Hello and welcome to Rick's Garage. So today is the latest episode, today is the day I'm going to get the engine bay back together, done, dusted on the Alpha GTV. See you in a minute. So yes, welcome back to the channel. As I say, today it's about time I'm going to get this project finished, done, dusted time to enjoy so in this episode there's not going to be loads of detail i'm just going to show you the basics the essentials of me putting the engine bay back together um all the essential bits and then at the end i'm going to give you a nice few rolling shots of everything finished looking forward to that without further ado guys let's get into the video Okay guys, so I'm excited to get the car finally back together so I can start enjoying it again. Now before I do so, I sorted out a couple of the wiring looms once again. As you can see, I completely re-wrapped these in some nice new fresh tesser tape. I will try and post a link in the description guys, but I purchased this from eBay, just a few quid. And as you can see, it really does make all the difference. This is the near side or passenger side of the car and once I sorted this side obviously then I moved over to the off side or the driver's side and I sorted that side out as well. But yeah once again I think this makes a world of difference. So we are on to the relay holder and you may remember from the previous episode i gave this a nice fresh lick of paint and it really does make a world of difference now you may or may not notice guys but i'm using nice fresh new hardware here stainless steel where possible but if not bright zinc plated Now thankfully all the wiring looms went back together perfectly in exactly the same place and luckily for me I did have my old videos to refer back to which I actually did quite a few times but I got there in the end. Now onto the brackets from the bonnet release cable, unfortunately I didn't get the yellow zinc plated to OEM spec but I will be doing that at a later date. I had a lot of problems trying to find a plater who was willing to do some zinc plating in small quantities. Okay so onto the fluid washer bottle, as you can see I gave that a nice clean which came up very very well indeed, quite satisfying to be honest. Now onto the coolant expansion tank, as you can see guys, this is my original tank looking very old, dirty, brown and grotty. I replaced this with a brand spanking new expansion tank from Alpha Shop Online, links in the description guys. Now I will accept that a brand spanking new tank does look a little bit out of place considering I wanted a sympathetic restoration inside my engine bay. But the alternative guys was to simply clean up my old tank and there are lots of videos and methods methods out there for doing this but none to a level which I was willing to accept. Now there are claims that it can be done and I have tried it in the past guys but believe me the majority of the videos are very misleading and it just doesn't work. To be fair guys the new expansion tank will still look good and it won't take long for it to look a little bit aged and a bit more fitting inside the engine bay. So onto the radiator and this is held firmly in place with a nice stainless steel bottom bracket which I purchased from Totally Alpha, links in the description guys. Now onto the air conditioning condenser, this is my original condenser which I have given a fresh lick of paint. Whether or not this condenser is any good is anybody's guess, my air conditioning hasn't worked since I purchased the car. Now obviously I do plan to get the car booked into a specialist to get the system diagnosed to see what the problem is, but I'm hoping it is just a dryer and a simple regas, but only time will tell. But while the condenser was out it only made sense to give it a fresh lick of paint. In go the twin fans complete with new resistors and together with this I've got a replacement piece of trunking for the wiring loom. This was kindly supplied by one of my subscribers. You know who you are, thank you very much indeed. 
Now if anybody is experiencing any cooling issues or more commonly your temperature gauge fluctuates a little bit more than what you would like then check your fan resistors guys. These do have a tendency to go faulty or quite simply they can sometimes break off and wedge themselves down between your fan shroud and your radiator which is exactly what happened to mine. Now personally my symptoms were in traffic the temperature would creep over halfway until the big high speed fans kicked in made a load of noise the temperature gauge would come back down com comfortably but two minutes later the whole process was happening again the problem was my resistors had broken subsequently my low speed fans were not working regulating the temperature more efficiently once i replaced these this was working perfectly now the resistors you can buy genuine ones online which are a little bit pricey now personally i purchased ebay items brand new and they have been working for me absolutely faultlessly I paid around £15 each for these. So on go the headlights. Now once again I fit all brand new stainless steel hardware to these and it really does make all the difference. On goes the freshly repainted slam panel complete with all new stickers and once again stainless steel hardware. If you haven't yet seen this episode guys on the slam panel then you can find it in my playlist entitled GTV Engine Bay Restoration. So on goes the throttle body complete with new gasket. I paid £5.99 for this gasket guys from a seller on eBay. That was the cheapest I could find it anywhere. Most other sellers were charging twice if not three times the amount and those that weren't were charging a silly amount for postage. At the end of the day, why pay more than you need to just for a little gasket? You could even make your own out of some gasket paper. As usual guys, there's a link in the description for this gasket. Whilst I'm here fitting this ECU, please do take note guys of the tatty looking insulation on my bulkhead. Now obviously I'm not going to live with this and you will notice in later shots or finishing shots I actually replaced this utilising some exhaust heat shielding and it makes a world of difference. So onto the coolant guys, I do use the ionized water, I buy this in 25 litres from Euro Car Parts and the coolant I use is the Halfords Oat Antifreeze. Now Oat stands for Organic Acid Technology which contains inhibitors to protect the internals of your engine against corrosion. Personally I've been using this Halfords coolant for many years in previous cars and I swear by the stuff. So last of all on go the panels inside the engine bay swiftly followed by the front bumper. I didn't cover the process of refitting the front bumper guys because it is just a reverse process of a video that I have already done. You will find that in the playlist. So I hope you'll agree guys it's looking fine and dandy but we've not finished yet because I'm about to show you what the engine bay looks like today.
So there you go guys, I'm very very proud of the work that I've done inside this engine bay. It's 99% finished, but yeah, it's pretty much done now. As you can see, I've also replaced the bulkhead insulation. I made this myself using some exhaust heat shielding and it just finishes the engine bay off beautifully. I've also repainted a couple of little brackets there in some black paint. Now you may have noticed that yes I do have the Auto Lusso silicon elbow intake pipe fitted. Now the reason for this is because my original pipe had a little split in it and to replace this with a genuine item or pattern part costs 80 to 90 pounds. But at the time I was lucky enough to drop on this Auto Lusso pipe, brand new unused from a private seller for 25 pounds. So that will do me for now. But personally I'm not overly keen on logos so I may opt to buy another original one in the future. So there you go guys, at last she's back together. All that's left to do now is start her up. Now, I'm not gonna do it in this video because I, you know what I'm like when it comes to starting the car, I don't like to start it up and then turn it straight off. Next time I start it is going to be when I'm ready to pull it out of the garage and drive it away. Hopefully, if everything goes to plan. So stay tuned for that next time, but for now, I'm absolutely chuffed to bits with it, it's all turned out well, there are lots of little bits that I would like to improve on, but again, I can enjoy doing that next winter. So, as always guys, thank you very much for watching, and I shall see you next time. Bye bye.